to explain what channel managers are, it's sometimes easiest to explain the problem. So that I'm going to kind of go from there. So you've got your hostel, and you want to get some bookings at your hostel. Well, pretty much everyone knows about Hostel World, and um, so what most new hostel owners do is they get signed up on Hostel World. They put their details up on Hostel World, the description of their hostel, uh, and that's usually the first step to getting their hostel listed on that site. Um, but then you also have to tell Hostel World how many of your beds on each day can be booked, and those are usually called allocations or inventory management, and they have a, an interface on the Hostel World site. Most people are familiar with it. That enables you to go in there and tell Hostel World, okay, you can sell this many of my beds on this date, some hostels choose to do a percentage of their beds. Other hostels choose to give all of their inventory to uh, Hostel World or sites like Hostel World. Um, so you provide those uh, calendar details or those allocation details to Hostel World, and now Hostel World can send you a reservation. Uh, and they'll send you a little email message with the details of that reservation. Well, that's fine because Hostel World knows that that reservation exists they're not going to sell that bed uh, again. But you also might get reservations in-house, either through your own website or uh, through the telephone. Now, when that happens, you need to communicate that to Hostel World so that they don't sell uh, those beds uh, again. Wait for the fire truck to go by. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so you communicate usually on their web platform, go to their calendar and say, okay, Hostel World, I just sold these beds on the 15th of next month. Uh, don't accept reservations for those particular beds uh, because otherwise I'm going to wind up with a double booking. So that's all well and good. Um, everything then is in, in sync. Your calendar is in sync with Hostel World's calendar. Um, so then, at some point, though, you say, well, you know, my hostel, it's only got 60% occupancy. I want to, you know, I want higher occupancy. I want, you know, 100%. Um, so you've heard about all of these other booking sites, and you say, well, I want to get listed on those as well. So you wind up going and putting your details of your hostel on each of those. And then you also have to give each of those a calendar of availability or allocations and tell each of those sites how many beds can be booked on a particular day. Um, but the same, now when you get an in-house reservation on your hostel, yes, you have to communicate it to Hostel World, but you have to communicate it to all these other ones. Hey, Courtney, is that you? It's Chuck outside. Can you mute your mic? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so now... Now you have to communicate the fact that you received a reservation from uh, you know all of those to all of those different uh, sites. Okay, so you can log into each one of those sites one at a time, and uh, you know give them all information. But that takes a lot of time. But finally, you'll get everything in sync. But then all of a sudden, you get a reservation from say Hostels Club. Well, none of the other sites know about that reservation. So now you've got to log into Hostel Times, GoMeo, Hostel World, and We Hostels, and now things start to get very frustrating. And then in today's, so what a lot of hostel owners wind up doing is they'll do something like this, where they'll put 20% of their beds across each of the different sites or some other, you know, percentages. They'll, you know, they'll divide it up. Maybe they'll give more to Hostel World and give less to everyone else. But the problem is, is that over time, on a particular day, maybe on Hostel World, they sell all of the beds, and so people are going to Hostel World and they can't book your hostel because Hostel World doesn't think you have any more beds available. You haven't given them the inventory available to be sold. Uh, and meanwhile, you know, you still have beds available on the other platforms, but travelers aren't looking at those platforms, they're looking at Hostel World. And so this just becomes a jumble. You know, you get one reservation from one site, and you're trying to keep it 
synced with your own calendar, your own system in your hostel. Um, but now you got to communicate it to all the others, and it's just very, very frustrating. That's all the frustration there. So the solution, uh, oh, and then what winds up happening over time for a lot of hostels, and this is just not even necessarily a conscious decision, is they'll wind up pretty much giving all of their inventory to hostel world again, and they're back in the same thing. Is they, they basically don't manage their calendars on all of those other booking sites, and eventually they expire, the date's passed, and then they don't have any inventory available to be sold on those other sites, and they're back to the same situation that they were in the starting, the starting point. This happens for a lot of hostels. Um, so the channel manager is designed to solve that problem. It creates a communication link between each of your booking sites, and each of these booking sites are referred to as channels, uh, distribution channels. So now each of these uh, places are all kept in sync. So let's go through that. On the basic level is if, if you receive a reservation in-house and you report that to just one place, your channel manager, say, I've just got a reservation for one person on the 15th, reduce my inventory that's available to be booked by one, the channel manager will immediately communicate that to all of your channels at once. So they're all in sync. All right, and so now everything's in sync, it's great. Likewise, if you receive a booking from, say, Hostel World, the channel manager will immediately communicate to the other channels that you have configured and say, re reduce uh, your inventory by one on those as well. So that is what, in basic terms, a channel manager does. Now, there's some other variations of this. Now, what I've talked about now is when you basically, you know, you could use this channel manager even if you have pen and paper at your hostel because you would log into the channel manager to update your calendar. What this enables you to do is go to one place on the web and put your inventory of beds on one website and then everything else is handled in the background automatically. So you could have a computer system in your hostel and it might not have a link to the channel manager, and that's okay. You, you know, if you're happy with the software that you're using in your hostel to keep track, first of all, let me just say a PMS system is a property management system, and this is just designed to keep track of who's in what bed, what, uh, what reservations are coming on a particular day, keeps track of transactions, money, you know, in and out of your hostel for check-ins, check-outs. That's what the PMS system does. Now, it does not necessarily need to communicate with the channel manager. It means a little bit more work for you because when the channel manager says you have a reservation, you still have to put that in manually into your PMS system. But many hostels do this. This is, at least it's manageable. Uh, it's, you know, they only have to go one place to actually update their inventory. And some hostels have a PMS system that provides a link to a channel manager. So basically, when you receive a met, uh, reservation, either on the phone or on your website, and you enter that into your PMS system at your hostel, then that PMS system will immediately report this to your channel manager, and then your channel manager will then report that to all of your different uh, distribution channels, the booking sites. Um, and even if you're using pen and paper, and there's still many hostels that are using pen and paper to manage their hostel, frequently small hostels, um, you can benefit from a channel manager. It just means that you need to go to the channel manager, report how many beds are available to be booked, and the channel manager will handle all that behind the scenes to keep all of your different distribution channels up to date. Now, there are also PMS systems with an integrated channel manager. Um, there's a, you know, so they have basically the ability to do what the main two channel managers, the standalone channel managers, do on their own. So, uh, you know, those are something that we could investigate at a future webinar, like which channel, ma which PMS systems 
uh, are out there and what uh, and how their channel management works. So that's another option um, for most people just getting started. You know, maybe that's uh, maybe that's overkill for a small hostel because there's obviously costs associated with getting that system. Um, so another thing that you can do with channel managers is you can have price offsets. So you know, everyone knows Hostel World for new hostels is now charging 15% commission. So a hostel could decide that they want to add 5% to the price for every Hostel World reservation that they receive. And GoMeo said that they were reducing their commission to 9%. So you can go into the channel manager and say, okay, for any GoMeo bookings uh, on GoMeo, please make that particular day 1% less. And you can also do that for a range of days. And then I have for this one, I said no change on all of the other ones. So you can set it like that. You can basically set a price offset plus or minus whatever your you know your standard price is. Um, they also allow you to have integration with your website. So if you have a hostel that you don't have the ability to accept reservations on your hostel, the channel managers that are out there have a very uh, basic system where you can actually book or your guests can book your hostel and that reservation gets reported immediately to the channel manager and then the channel manager reports that to all of the booking sites or it doesn't really report the reservation but it reduces your inventory on all of those sites so that keeps you up to date there. Um, so the, there are two in my mind and someone may, John you may know others, uh, there are two main channel managers that seem to serve the needs of hostels um, that our hostels are using. Um, MyAllocator.com is very reasonable in its price and it covers all of the distribution channels that most hostels use. Hostels Club, Hostel World, Hostel Times, GoMeo, you know, there's a bunch of other ones here too, but all of the main ones are covered by MyAllocator and it's like 12 euros per month, 16 US dollars per month and the book now button for your website if you want that is included in that price. Um, the other one that you'll see hostels using is SiteMinder, uh, SiteMinder.com and they are significantly more expensive than uh, my allocator running, they base their price on the size of your hostel. So for a small hostel it's $79, for a large hostel it's $360 uh, nine dollars and I think over 500 beds it gets even more than that and the booking button that ability to integrate that little widget on your website is ex is an extra cost but the benefit you get on SiteMinder or it could be a benefit for some hostels is that they have far more channels now in my experience most of these channels though are not applicable to hostels their SiteMinder also provides this service for hotels and a lot of these channels, you know, they are booking sites where really hotel travelers uh, go to. Um, and so for me, I use my allocator. Most of the hostel owners that I know use my allocator, both because of the price and because all of the booking sites that they want to access uh, are served by my allocator. Um, a question has come up for me is like, well, should I get both channel managers, uh, you know, because then I can have access to the most different booking platforms. And I would say no, no. <laughs> so each of these are managing your inventory on different sites, all these different sites. And um, if you wind up configuring each of those channel managers for the same booking platforms, then they are basically going to be fighting with each other to keep your calendars up to date and it would create some sort of endless loop that would probably suck the universe into a black hole or something. I don't know. <laughs> but um, anyway, that's the basic primer on channel managers. And uh, Jay, you might have some questions. Well, uh, you know, I've, I've 
as you know, I, I wrote about 50 questions to you guys, and uh, you answered them very well. Uh, and uh, actually, my allocator people chimed in as well, and uh, I've really been filled up, and I've followed your uh, dissertation right there, and I, I, I really understand it. I've got some particular questions, uh, not that are that what I think would be the same for other ones would be kind of like problem solving type of questions. If you don't mind. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, and I may refer them to John because he's more technically inclined. Well, okay. well, uh, one of the things that got me into uh, uh, finding out about uh, ch uh, channel managers, booking engines. Uh, um, I mean, this just this this ended, uh, I was in the Philippines, and after almost a year of trying to put a new website up uh, with this check front reservation system, uh, and and just for some reason it wasn't popping up. And all of a sudden, I got this pop up a couple of days before I came home to Hawaii, and it said, "Hey, maybe we can help you out. We're the uh, international." In, or in, instant international instant booking or something or something like that. I IBM or I don't instant know. Instant world right. booking. Go ahead, instant world booking. That's right, John. Thank you. Um, and uh, but after dealing with Darren, uh, I, I've I've swung over to my allocator, blah blah blah. And uh, so so anyway, n now it put me into the area of. Uh, I wanted to be able to have what, what was real important to me out here in the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, I don't know if it's common for you guys, but we get a lot of reservations where there's n no show uh, or a real late cancellation, you know, and we're just kind of holding the bag on reservations, especially over our holiday times. You know, people lock up our few private rooms for two weeks and then we don't ever see or hear from them. And uh, it, it's kind of a pain. We are for a while having people confirming by sending a check. Well, that's kind of hard from Germany, and because uh, surprisingly we have half of our guests are from Switzerland and Germany, and uh, so uh, I wanted to be like the airlines and have a box you had to check to insert your credit card that said uh, I agree to the terms. And th the reason for it is is because if you t I was told if you take a credit card uh, reservation that if they don't show up, or, or for any reason, they might get there and turn their nose up at our place, you know. And um, um, they, when they go to their bank, who owns their credit card, they say, "Hey, I don't want to pay, blah, for whatever reason that might be reasonable to the uh, bank." They get to pull the, that money back out of my bank account, and uh, you know, I've already paid maybe thirty-three or more percent of that to the, ta the state of Hawaii, two tax agencies, uh, the credit card company, um, you know, just etc. And, um, and then can't fill the spot because of the late cancellation or no-show. So I wanted to have this, uh, what I'm told is the box, just like the airline, it says you accept the terms of agreement, you click the box, your credit card then can go forward, or you can go forward with the reservation, whether it be an airline or my little hostel. But it does mean that you're not. If I put no refunds, you're not going to get your money back by any means because you've agreed to the terms. And so uh, I, I keep editing the terms. Uh, I've mentioned this uh, young man in New York City that I met over the internet, uh, Antonio Calabresi. Uh, he's called Unraveled Media. And he, I met him through Wix, and he's got me on a construction website where it's .weebly.com. But uh, I've edited this terms of agreement so many times, I'd love to see uh, lots of other people's terms of agreement, if they've got the same issue as I do, wanting to have. I agree to these terms, meaning those are the terms, and you will not get a refund unless it's otherwise. So, so you're our, referring to a reservation cancellation policy. Yeah. So our latest edit, which is not even up there yet, basically says uh, if you if you no show, you lose. But if you cancel at any time, we don't care if it's two months in advance or an hour before, just to be courteous, that we will try to move your reservation around to the best of your needs and our occupancy. And this may be unique to us because we're we're you know we're a little island, uh, 
the last part of the United States to the west, and um, you know we just don't have access to as many people. Certainly not so, as many as Honolulu, you know. So Jay, uh, in terms of cancellation policies, that should be very easy because most hostels that are accepting reservations on their website will list their cancellation policies somewhere on their website. Uh, sometimes it's in the FAQ, frequently asked questions, that's where we list ours. Um, and then when, just in terms of dealing with your credit card company, when the reservation has been confirmed, we send them an email that also outlines the cancellation policy uh, for that. And generally, we just had one, when the credit card company they do a chargeback initiation and you say to the credit card company we stated the cancellation policy which they agreed to on our website and then we actually sent it to them again in the confirmation email not all the times depends on the reviewer but they'll say okay there is usually a procedure with each credit card company of how telephone reservations can work and how you can actually be protected and it basically requires a certain number of notifications to the guest the the cancellation that they're notified of your cancellation policy um, so that's uh, you know that's something that you can do it's not necessarily related to channel managers but um, that's on there um, well, if you don't mind me continue, go ahead oh and I was I was just gonna on the topic of channel managers, first of all, I wanted to make sure because Susan came under the came into the platform and she had any questions for her hostel in Costa Rica, and then we'll come back. We'll go back and forth. Cool. No, we're not using a channel manager. What we're doing is we've got a well, we have a reservation system, a PMS that actually has a that connects to we just the hostel world right now, actually, and that's the only one we're using. We haven't connected with anyone else at this point. Can we're I fairly, ask uh, which which uh, PMS system you're using? Servoy. Mm -hmm. How do you spell that? S I R V O Y. Okay. And, and do they have an integrated channel manager in their system? They do, and they have a bunch of different things that they, I guess, uh, Booking.com, TripAdvisor. Um, right now, we've we've just done Hostel World. Um, mm -hmm. We just opened it in April. Okay. So we're pretty new. <laughs> To the entire so, system. Yeah, one of the things. I'm just curious where she's at in in Costa Rica. I've lived in Costa Rica. We're in Haco. 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 J A C O. I I haven't heard of that, but uh, I went to surf route, so I was hugging the water line most of the time, other than yeah, some. We're, we're a surf hostel, so we're right right on the beach. Oh, for. Are you in the north on the Pacific side? We're in the Pacific side, yeah. Yeah, it's really it's really just south of um, about an hour south of San Jose. Oh, okay, all right. So one of the things uh, I would like to say is that a lot of hostels are using uh, Backpack Online for their property management system, and I that's something that I definitely do not recommend to hostels. Not because that necessarily that you know there's anything wrong with their software or anything like that, but in my opinion, there's an inherent conflict of interest when you let a booking platform have access to all of the information in your hostel, which basically what Backpack Online will do, um, and so it, they'll be able to see if you get a reservation from one of these other platforms and you enter that into the system, first of all, they don't really integrate well with those others, but if you enter that in, you're giving them insights into how they can actually compete against the other booking platforms. So I think that if you do have a PMS system, like you were saying, Savoy, um, it needs to be independent of the booking platforms that are out there. So. And it is. Mm -hmm. it's, it is totally independent. So I guess the one thing that we're struggling with right now is is that we're trying to get a point of service system and have it because we have a bar and a restaurant and have it integrated with a PMS. So Savoy doesn't have that, you know, besides extras at the time. So we're thinking maybe we go to a different PMS 
And I, but I don't, we don't know how to do that and have it integrated. I, I, there's just we haven't found anything else out there like that. That's a common complaint with a lot of hostels is that a lot of the PMS systems don't have an integrated POS system. Uh, and then for more established mm -hmm. places, POS system with inventory management, uh, right. you know, those are always usually a separate system. Or there are some very high-end systems that, like, you know, they're very expensive uh, and have maintenance fees as well. So uh, you're not alone in that one uh, in terms of the POS system. But if you were to get, see, what I guess I don't don't understand about the channel managers is if we were to use, for example, any system that we found out there, like a, a, if we found a good reservation system that had a POS with it, can we we can just add the channel manager to it, or would we be updating both systems also? Would we have to update the channel manager and the P, and the our own system? Well, I think that that would be something that you would definitely want to research as you're looking for a PMS system because it sounds like Savoy is already working. First of all, Savoy already works with Hostel World. I assume right. that Savoy will also work with other channels. Yeah, uh, not a lot of the other ones that, not a lot of the other Hostel channels, though. Oh, okay. okay. But I'm not sure we need them at this point, to be honest. Mm -hmm. We're okay. getting a lot of reservations through our website and through... Just okay. TripAdvisor. So, you know, the other thing that has happened, and you're kind of new on on this on the hostel industry yeah. scene. One of the things, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of these other hostel OTAs. Um, you know, Hostel Times, Hostels Club, GoMeo, We Hostels. And one of the things that they've struggled with in our industry is getting we, the hostels, the suppliers to give them inventory um, so that they can actually have something to sell to their customers. Um, and what happens then is, is that customers go to those other sites, they don't have a good experience because they can't find the hostel that they want, and then they wind up going away and they wind up going to Hostel World. Well, the result of that has been uh, that Hostel World has the lion's share of all of the bookings in the hostel market, and they've basically been able to dictate the terms of how we, the suppliers, will interact with them. So uh, they've just raised the commission rate from 10% to 12%. Yeah. New, host new hostels have to pay 15%, and there's no indication that that will necessarily stop. Some of the big, big OTAs uh, that serve more of the hotel industry are already charging 20%. So, in my opinion, that whole model is very, you know, extractive of value to our industry. Um, and so, one of the things that I would like to see is, is that, you know, hostels making this effort towards, um, you know, listing their hostel on all of these different properties. And that's one of the reasons that a channel manager is vital to that, because obviously a hostel doesn't have the ability to do all that. So and you may only get a booking from some of these channels, you know, a few times a year, but at least then we can start to change behavior of the travelers so that we're not feeling this constant, like, uh, situation where Hostel World dictates the terms to our industry. So, uh, Courtney has a comment or a question. Um, Susan, I understand what you mean about, you know, feeling like you don't need to go beyond Hostel World because you're getting bookings. Uh, but in addition to what Darren's saying, that's exactly what a channel manager is great for, is you really don't have any extra work um, beyond just saying, okay, here's the inventory. The channel manager will adjust it all. So it's just giving you opportunity to sell more beds without really a downside. Uh, my only advice would be to make sure before you sign up with other OTAs that they're the right ones to work for for you. Um, I know, for instance, Booking.com, people have different experiences with. Um, some hostels have chosen to only sell their private rooms on Booking.com because the guests they get are looking for more of a hotel experience, and when they have dorm beds, they're not as happy um, versus, you know, using We Hostels is obviously a hostel website. Um, so just kind of think about that, but other than that, there's really no downside to signing up with a bunch of them if you have a channel manager. Well, okay, so my question then is, is, so if we're using, for example, Servoy right now, can we use 
the channel manager in conjunction with it? I How don't know work? about that PMS in particular, but if you look at that PMS and see it, most PMS systems will integrate with either uh, MyCater or SiteMinder. Uh, those are kind of the two main channel managers. If it says yes, then I don't yes, think they do. They don't. See, I don't okay. Think they do. So one of the things that you could probably do is just not use that functionality on Savoy, but then that would mean that you would have another interface. You would have to go to, say, the My Allocator interface in order to update your inventory, things available to be booked. Right. It, it that, creates, that creates a little bit more work for you. We get a lot of walk-ins. Uh-huh. That could be, that's our only, that would be, a, that would be difficult. Uh, well, you'd still be able to get those as well, but uh, what you're saying is then you'd have to go to the channel updating. manager. Uh, update. Yeah, updating. Uh-huh. Um, I think John has something. Darren, if I can come in there? Or yeah, go ahead, John. No, I just, um, I'll answer, I'll give some information in regards to Susan and back to Jay's question as well. But firstly, I just, um, I use my allocator, and for a PMS I use Banana Desk. Which has, uh, I presume, POS stands for point of sale, is it? Or yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. who? Are you, I didn't hear. Who are you using? Uh, Banana Disk as a PMS. It's Bana I don't understand that. New. Banana, Banana Disk. As in the fruit. Banana Disk. Banana Disk. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I use that as a PMS, and that integrates with my allocator, um, and it has a POS as in. Um, you can set up, well for me, I, I, I don't have a bar or anything, but say if I'm doing laundry or if I'm organizing tours and I'm getting commission from them, I've done set up so that I can add that to the person staying in at the end of when they're leaving, they pay for the room plus all the all the other stuff. Um, right. And that integrates with, with my allocator, the, the channel manager. Um, so so, so they're, they're separate in a way, um, but uh, so you're paying for my allocator separate to, to Banana Desk but you, you basically update on the PMS on Banana Desk, and that sends all the information to the channel manager, which then sends all the information to the to the OTAs like hostelworldbook.com. Okay. Yeah. Um, and ju just in regards, Jay, you were saying about things like um, terms and conditions and um, booking through your own website. With, um, with, with my allocator, uh, firstly, you can have a, a checkbox for terms and conditions. Um, and also, it takes the, the credit card details of the customer. Now, with the credit card details, it just checks that it looks like a credit card because um, it can't check if it's a fake credit card or not. So obviously, if people put a 16-digit number, usually beginning with, I think, a 4 or 5, it will say that it's, it's a valid credit card. Um, now you can connect PayPal with it, so I think you can either take a deposit or you can take the full amount when you're taking your, your booking. Um, that's, I, I don't use PayPal with my allocator. They charge an extra fee for that, but, but you can use that if you want to take the whole amount up front. Uh, John, I want you to elaborate on that a little bit better. You, uh, you hit a point there that I had never considered. Uh, of course, Visa's a four and MasterCard's a five. Uh, I would. I just would accept the face value that it's good. They give me a date, uh, an expiration date, and three numbers on the back. But you're you're saying with my allocator, if did I hear you say that you pay a little bit more, and they'll have a company like I use right now from my swipe machine credit card, Authorize.net. And I believe I believe they're the ones, unless it's uh, Veracity.com who handles the credit card, that they verify that it's a real card, and you're not running a bogus number. Uh, yeah, um, I, I, don't, I don't use that integration because it costs more, um, and it's only happened to me twice that I've had people use fake credit card numbers, but obviously some people, maybe it happens more, so you might have to use, uh, they integrate with PayPal to either, I guess they have to take a certain amount out to check if it's a, it's a real card, um, and I, I think also you can set it up that if you want to take the full amount and then, obviously, if they don't show, then you don't lose anything. A conversation that I frequently have with hostel owners that um, I'd like to see hostel uh, owners kind of make this evaluation. A lot of hostels rely almost 100% on hostel world uh, because, and basically, they're giving hostel world, you know, 12% uh, commission 
for on every single booking uh, in exchange for this protection that you might have a guest that doesn't show. There seems to be a lot of emphasis on the no-shows. Um, and every market's different and every hostel's different depending on you know how you know city versus rural hostel. So I think this is a valuation you have to do yourself. But you know, figure out like how many no shows do you have over the course of a year? And you know, those I know while they have a lot of emotional weight, it's like, hey, somebody stood me up. But what is the actual cost of that? versus the 12% that you're paying on every single booking that you're receiving. Um, so we actually tried something a couple of years ago where we were actually accepting reservations with no deposit at all on Facebook. And we basically just said, this is a promise between you and us. And we said, you know, you, know, you have to promise that you're going to come. I think it said promise three times on there. And we had no no-shows from Facebook reservations. Um, and then, of course, we get 100% of that. Um, so it's just an interesting thing because, you know, I guess 22 years ago when I started my hostel, it, there was no ability for people to send you money in advance. They called up on the phone and they said, I'd like to make a reservation. And it says, okay, we're going to be turning away other people for this bed, but we're going to hold it for you so you promise that you'll come. And most people came, but occasionally you would lose a few here and there, and that was just part of doing business. But now it's like we're giving, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent on every single booking, which something, you know, something seems uh, skewed in all of that. It's like we've changed our way of thinking that we really must protect ourselves from these no-shows. And then, uh, as was kind of addressed, a lot of times when you do get the no-show and you try to charge their credit card. Now their credit card's maxed out. Uh, now you find out that they used a virtual credit card, so it was only good for one transaction. It was a prepaid credit card. Uh, and now you can't charge their credit card anyway, you know, for the remaining 90%. So, And the, the issue with Hostel World compared to what I do like about Booking.com is um, with a lot of places, well, with the, the credit card system I'm using at the moment, you can't take money without the CVV number. Um, from Booking.com, I get the CVV number, but from Hostel World, I don't get it. So if if I have a notion with Hostel World, I've actually no way of taking money. Um, and a lot of in a lot of countries, it's it's the same. Can I get an overview of? Uh, are you saying that if if yeah, Hostel World is using that? I'm sorry. If Hostel World is making your uh, setting your reservation, uh, they're uh, uh, basically certifying that the credit card is good, but but the, well, because they take a deposit, yeah. For for their deposit end, which we don't see, so even though Hostel World's getting their percentage, we're still not receiving a penny of that. Because so. if someone makes a deposit with a credit card and it goes through. You know, in June, but the booking's not till August, and then they no show in August. By the time you go to charge, that card could have been maxed out. It could have been canceled. It could have been invalid by then. Um, so it's not necessarily that they make their booking or their deposit with a fake card, but things can change by the time you go to charge a no show. But I mean, I agree with you, Darren. Um, as far as you know, you may have a couple no shows here and there and the money of that one bed night or whatnot versus the percentage that you're taking each booking. Um, but I do think that paying even just a little bit and knowing that your credit card details are on file keeps a lot of people from no-showing and actually canceling. So okay. it's a little bit chicken and egg. You know, if you didn't take credit card details to try to save that money, you may end up with a lot more no-shows. Yeah, and I also don't say that, you know, the market was the same 22 years ago as it is today. There's a lot more places along the road to get distracted now than you, you know than you did before. Uh, so all of a sudden now someone on couch surfing gives you a free bed, so now they just go there. But for a lot of travelers, that 10% also isn't uh, isn't enough incentive for them to keep their reservation sometimes. 
Uh, so they'll do yeah. something where they just use a prepaid. They'll say, you know, I'll just write off the 10 ten percent. So. Yeah, I don't think they're worried about the ten percent. I think it's knowing that they could be charged in full. Yeah. 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 And, and and there's little strategies as well. Like obviously we don't have to go into them here, but like, like a few days before they're booking, sending automated emails, just um, giving them directions or something. And then I, if they had forgot about the booking and they weren't going to show, they'll probably reply and say, oh, actually, I'm not going to show. And then at least you know a few days out rather than waiting for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I'm not sure what we're at on time, but... Um, I may end our broadcast because you know basically the channel manager part is on, but we can stay online for a little bit more if you guys I have want. Oh, channel talk. manager thing. Yeah. Um, I know a few people have emailed me, and I think emailed John as well um, about how Airbnb works and with channel managers, um, and that's a little confusing. But I don't know, John. Do you want to touch on that at all? Um, my like my allocator does integrate with Airbnb. I haven't integrated it with Airbnb. But I think it basically uses, it's kind of difficult because it uses a calendar system. So it checks, um, say for me I've got six bedrooms, so I think this is the way it works, that it checks the six bedrooms. If they're all empty, it will show on Airbnb that there's a room, but once I get one of them full, it'll close it off in Airbnb. Do you have um, multiple listings on Airbnb or just the one? For me, I just have one. I, I, I think as well you, you, can, you can only connect it to one of the listings. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, depending on how many rooms, like, like I have six bedrooms and I have five different room types, so it's a bit difficult for me. But if you had a lot of the same room and that's the room you're selling on Airbnb, and then I guess you could just get to that one room yep. um, on on the channel manager. So the difficult thing with uh, the way the Airbnb integration works with uh, my allocator is is that. On most of these other booking sites that we referred to, Hostel World, Hostels Club, they're basically keeping a number for a particular room type, uh, four bed dorm. How many, and then I have, okay, you can uh, accept reservations for up to 10 people in my four bed dorms. But on Airbnb, every single bed has its own separate calendar. So trying to map that you can only map it, it's basically it's a dorm room with only one bed in it. So it's difficult to actually make those mappings the way Airbnb is set up. So, so basically if anyone has questions on Airbnb they can email me but the short answer is to make multiple listings for each bed in order to take more than one guest at a time and it's almost easier not to connect that one with the channel manager even though it works and to um, update that calendar manually. Yeah. All right. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us, the people, the six, now four people who are watching uh, live right now. But uh, we'll try to do these on a regular basis. You know, they're not, you know, it's not high production quality, but I just want to get the information out there. Uh, what one of the things that's coming up is, is that we were going to get a representative from My Allocator and also from SiteMinder uh, to do kind of a demo uh, of those different platforms and maybe we can get into some of the, uh, the more technical details, the more subtle details of those different platforms for people to understand how to use those platforms. But I'm hoping that will come in the future. But thanks for joining us, everyone.